Welcome back, Acron fans, to another exhibition match. This time, we're going to be on Snowblind, watching a match between Cybernetic Pony and Aragant. I am Shadow 3 your commentator, and let us begin. So, Aragant starting out in the northeast corner of the map, and Cybernetic Pony at the southwest corner. Aragant once again going for CISO, and Cybernetic Pony going for Grekum. So, we have another CISO versus Grekum matchup. I never thought I'd say this. I kind of missed this matchup. I never thought I would say that. I mean... A year ago, I'd have killed for Vecure matchups, and now Vecure matchups are common enough that I'm actually missing Cecil versus Grekum, so I'm a bit glad to see that. That being said, I don't mind Vecure matchups. I do like them, I just... I just haven't seen these in a while. So, actually, Grekum Mirrors are the ones that I saw especially often. But, Aragon, going for Cecil, he does have... Actually, I should probably go over this map, come to think of it. This hasn't been shown much. So Snowblind is a map that has, as you can see, northeast start, southwest start, very open. It, it's pretty, as you can see, it's actually quite small too. But it's very open. You have the expansion, a small expansion to the north, or sorry, the southwest and northeast. You have expansions over the north. You have expansions in the center. Quite a lot of resources in the center, actually. A nice little figure eight pattern. And then, once again, mirrored along the south. So, not a whole lot of choke points there. I mean, there is a choke point here, choke points along the center, but it's not that closed off. I believe this section up here is actually only accessible to infantry. I'm not entirely sure, but the ramps do look steep enough that at least at this ramp, possibly not this ramp, but definitely this one up here, infantry can only get up it. Not vehicles, which I would have to double check that. This ramp looks like this vehicle passable, but this one looks like just infantry, and that's... That is actually a little-known mechanic of Akron, is that infantry do have a more forgiving pathing angle setup than vehicles. Most maps do not exploit this because it's very difficult to communicate that only infantry can go up a certain ramp. But given that these ramps are quite small, it wouldn't surprise me if that was actually the case. Because if the ramp's quite small, it does hint that vehicles are not allowed, since most vehicles are 3x3 three three minimum. Or 4x2 in the case of tanks. Like too wide. But usually if it's this small, it means infantry only. Or at least it's a good way of communicating that. Anyway, back to the actual game itself, now I've described the map. The Aragon is... Oh, sorry, I got confused. Aragon's playing Grekum, Cybernetic Pony's playing CISO, and I was mixed up for the first two minutes of the game. Good thing I didn't explain too much about what they were doing. So Aragon, on the other hand, so he's going for the Grekum this time. He is going for quick... Actually, quick Octos. This is normally what he does. And hitting Cybernetic Pony's base, the 206 mark, going to deal a lot of damage with that. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, has quickly built up a factory and an armory, but... Going heavily, heavily for resource processors, not expecting Aragon's attack at all, and actually it's a little bit surprising given that Aragon did hit him in the middle of the map, hit his scouts in the middle of the map with the Octos. It's a good hint that Octo Rush is coming. And it's one thing about Aragon actually, he does, he likes his Octo Rushes. I'm sure he's gonna not do that so much. And probably by the time the tournament rolls around, which just so you know, the signups have closed, so I. No reason to really advertise too much more. But yeah, there is going to be a Christmas tournament that's going to be starting the 9th. Probably the cast will be over the weekends. But the but Aragon is in the tournament. Hopefully for his sake, he's not going to be... And it looks like he is going to be dealing with whatever damage Cybernetic Pony. Cybernetic Pony is going to be hitting back. I'm not sure if Cybernetic Pony is going to be dealing with this. He should be. He's further in the future and, from his point of view, dead. But apparently this game had a fair amount of lag, unfortunately. Oh well. Anyway, Aragon probably will not be doing Octo Rushes every game when he's in the tournament. I'm sure he's learned more styles by now, and it's just he does like his Octo Rushes. It's something to keep in mind for anyone who fights him. And Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, likes his economy, and he likes his Chrono Porting as well. So bear that in mind. And I like my comm hubs. I like to see everything in the map. I like to spy on everyone, because... Information is everything. If you know what your opponent's up to, you win. And they don't know what you're up to, you win. Assuming you know what you do, then you win. But anyway, looks like Cybernetic Pony is jumping back. He is trying to deal with this, but he doesn't have a whole lot to deal with it with. Special Ops and Marine. The other Marine further in the back, not able to defend, and the Octo able to finish it off. So Aragont, I think, has this game. Cybernetic Pony jumping back a bit further, moving his units further back to avoid any problems. He should build up... He should have built an armory, actually, pr really quickly. Much faster than he had already. But he is building up an armory at the 155 mark, right before the autos get in. And the autos are going to get in. And very nicely done. I should point this out. He is leaving... Or Wait, is he leaving one? No, I think he left more than one space in between. 
I'm gonna double check. It looks like he might just be leaving one space in between for infantry. If he does that, puts them there, make sure they stay in place. The Octos will not kill them. Because the Octos won't be able to get in. Anyway, more infantry coming up. And no, he's not taking advantage of a sim base. Why is he not moving his infantry into this gap right here? He needs to move them in here, but he's not. He has still managed to survive that attack, however. So Cyber Pony Pony's still in this game. Aragon has not quite won yet. But Cyber Pony Pony continuing to go for an economic build while Aragon looks like he is transitioning as well to economy. So both players are playing a bit more for the mid to late game. Aragon stopped doing his rush, but Cyber Pony Pony doesn't seem to care. He doesn't even seem to be worried about a potential second attack from Octos. He's content to continue along with his economy and build up his factory and go from there. Although he does notice the unplayable pass, does double check in the attack, but I don't think anything's going to change about that. He can't do anything about that. And Aragont, about four minute mark, about two minutes up from where we were, is going for Seppi. He's probably going to go for a reef and then from there go for advanced structures. Though, maybe not. Actually, I kind of doubt... Nope, he is going for a reef. There it is. So he's going to go for a reef, going to go for advanced structures, going to get a spire off of Faro, get air units, and then try to do that. And if he does anything like he did in that game that I cast, I think, a week ago with J-Raccoon, but he actually takes advantage of the Faro pod timing, that will be really powerful. And it looks like, there we go, he is getting very quick... Adva or Actually, 546 advanced structures, moderately quick. Getting a Faro, so he's very, very definitely going for air units. Once he gets the air units up, he will have the Faropod very quickly, and then after that, go for an attack. Mech being built, however, Cybernetic Pony going for a Macrofab probably, and the Mech, only one Mech, not going for multiple Mechs, not worry too much about large air assault, because Mechs are, for cost, the most powerful anti-air unit that CISO has. They're very cheap, that's the main reason. But they're actually quite powerful. Mechs, Tethviers, and Cephys are extremely powerful anti-air. The only weakness they have is their lack of health. But they're very cheap, so you get a large army of them, and... They basically just take out the sky for you. Spire has been built. Aragont about to build units. Why hasn't he built units? Actually, I'm quite surprised. He, he can afford everything he has. He should afford everything. I mean, he's, he is going for more RPs, but he could get a couple Faropods right now and attack. That would be a... Well, hard to say if it's a great thing to do because he's three minutes ahead of Cybernetic Pony. He is, however, macroing in the present. I am glad to see that. But he just needs to make sure he micros in the past. He needs to make sure he bookmarks... Good tip, if you have your unit set up, if you are macroing in the present or future, and you have a bunch of units set up you want to attack with, use Control and hit one of the F keys between F1 and F8, and that will cause a bookmark. I think it might be Command plus F1 to F8 on the max, but that will make a bookmark on the timeline. Hit F1 to F8 to get back to that, and just wait until that gets near the unplayable past. And no, Aragon actually going for a Chronoporting. Not in fact going for Spire, or at least not in fact going for Spire units yet. Going for Chronoporting first, I do not agree with this, but I think it will work out. I typically would go for air units first, get something set up so that when you have chronoporting, ready to get chronoporting, you can chronoport stuff back. Even if it's a bit later that you get chronoporting, at least you immediately have chronoport fodder, as it were. But he is going the other way around and getting pods, and I think if he does chronoport back where Cybernetic Pony is, or around that point, he's going to be able to go through. There is a Twinmar coming in, however, so he's got to be quick about this. This Twinmar is going to move into Aragon's base and will deal with it. There's that Twinmar right now. It'll stop at the Arcticus first unless... I think Cybernetic Pony may have moved it. In. No, he's attack moving. That is an attack move. It will stop at the Arcticus. It will deal with that first. So that Arcticus is going to take the brunt of it. Cybernetic Pony, however, has... has a, Well, it's a full two minutes to deal with this and to move it into a better position to attack with. And another Twinmar will be following it shortly. And Aragon, he does have his Farapod. He does have Chronoporting. And he's going to be moving back, or moving back in time to get rid of this Twinmar. But he hasn't yet built the Faropod, and he needs to do that as soon as he can. He might be going with the Faropod now, and this is kind of why I recommend having units first, because just in case Chronoporting takes a while to get to, not only do you get units Chronoported as soon as you get Chronoporting, you also make absolutely sure that you can protect your investment, because you have the units needed to deal with any external threats. And Aragon sees the wisdom of that somewhat, and starts building Sepipods. Why building Sepipods? Not sure. Faropods is what he wants, not Sepipods, but going for Sepipods nonetheless. I'm rather confused. There's the Faropod, however, and the Sepipod will be able to at least distract the Twinmar. But the Twinmar is going to be able to basically just wait a while. Both the Twinmar and the Sepipod are about evenly matched with each other for damage. Well, relative damage, rather. Sepipod is dealing more damage to the Twinmar than the Twinmar is dealing to it, but it looks like they're about the same relative 
damage. So, Barapod evening it out, however, making it Aragon's win in this battle, and now Aragon can safely get Chronoporting. But no, he's getting Legal Class. Instead, looks like he's going to go for Octoligos. Possibly. He has no Octopods in play right now, but knowing him, he's probably not going to go for Octoligos. He's probably going to go for Faro and Sepiligos, so getting an Octopod will be likely his next move. Now, Cybernetic Pony on the other hand, there's what we already saw with the Twin Mar and the second Twin Mar coming in. No other units being built. He's not expanded too heavily, and the Twin Mar actually moving back. Looks like anticipating Aragon going for an uppercut, he's moving his Twin Mar back to have some defense. He, if he's really anticipating that, he should be building frigates. And there they are! Frigates right there. So he does have some intention of countering Aragon attacking him, which Aragon should do right now. Or actually, no, he shouldn't, because there's a frigate coming in. But the Sepipod, actually, a couple Sepipods would deal with that just fine. However, Legal Class is on schedule to be researched, and it will be researched in about two seconds. But where is that Octopod? Looks like he might actually be going for an Octoligo proxy. Like, putting his Sepi... Well, Sepipod, Faropod, progenerating them somewhere, and then dropping an Octoligo from there, or progening an Octoligo from there. And the frigate has come in... The battle has started, and the Sepipod getting rid of the Frigate before the Frigate does anything. Cybernetic Pony had chosen to move them in rather than attack moving, causing that Frigate to take a ton of damage and deal none in return. So Cybernetic Pony, we are looking at his point of view. He's not... No, there he goes. Now he's moving the Frigate. Or attacking with the Frigate. Going to get rid of the Sepipod. And that is going to be it. So... Uh, Aragon losing a lot of forces. He doesn't have any real anti-air at this point. He doesn't have any real air force at this point. And Cybernetic Pony, I think, is going to have an advantage. He's not going to have the game yet. Aragon still has some money in the bank. He still has some resources. He's still getting some expansions. He can still go back and reinvest that into units. Getting more Faropods may not be the best idea, though. It's just hard to say, because Seppies would die to the Twin Mars, and the Fergus would, Fergus would very easily spot for the Twin Mars, so no big deal there. Cyber Knight Pony would have that attack moving, or attack working, rather. But he can't really get Sepipods to do the trick because the frigates are just going to kill it too quickly. So Aragon, really in a tight spot, I think the best thing you can do is convert a ton of his QP into LC and then build a bunch of Sepipods from there. That's his best bet. And Cloaking, not quite what he needs to do. Wait, what? That... That doesn't make any sense. That, hold on. Wait, there's... This is not a detector. And... Okay, well, Aragon throws in the towel anyway. I'm not sure what was doing the detection there. No Special Ops or ATHCs or Lance... Or, sorry, Tornads detected. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, and... Interesting game. I mean... Kind of petered out a bit at the end, but... Still, definitely a good reason why... And I was wrong, I guess. That Chronoporting did not work out. Definitely a good reason why you want to build units before getting Chronoporting. That is very important. Oh, sorry, Cyber Knight Pony pointed out in the chat that it was the Reef Splash that killed the Faropod, not anything else. Sorry, the Splash from the Twin Mar on the Reef, because Twin Mars have a massive splash radius. That makes perfect sense. Okay, thank you, Cyber Knight Pony, for pointing that out. So, I'll have another game for you shortly. Stay tuned, everyone.